Hey Wild Food Clan, this is Jula James coming live at you from Bellingham Bay. Um, it's June 4th, sunny as you can see, and we are here to search for sea bean. What is sea bean you ask? Well, it goes by the name of Salicornia virginica. Sal um, for salt in Latin and cornea meaning horn in reference to the horn-like appearance of the modified leaf. Um, other common names are glasswort, um, beach asparagus, pickleweed, chicken claw. Okay now, so I really want to tell a little, about, a little bit about the habitat of sea bean. Um, right now we are in a pocket estuary. Sea bean loves protected shore and coves where it's not getting a lot of strong wave action. You won't find it in exposed beaches. This is a prime habitat for sea bean, and when it receives this kind of habitat, it forms extensive colonies. It loves saline environments and soils. It is one of the most extreme halophyte. Halophyte is any plant that can tolerate and lives in um, saline soils or can tolerate salt water. Sea bean can tolerate 70 grams of salt per liter. That is one of the highest concentrations of any plant that it, this can handle. Okay now let's talk a little more about the description of sea bean. This specific species, Salicornia virginica, is um, a perennial. So right now it's going through its new growth phase and in the late summer to early fall, um, all of these stems will be turned red from salt accumulation and they'll die back over the winter and then regrow again in early spring. This plant is really unique because as it accumulates salt, um, the joints and stems turn red and when the salt concentration is too high, the tips that have the most concentrated salt content will fall off. If I could give you a few examples here. So right here we got two different plants. Same area, one's closer to the water. This one further up on the beach is gray green color. That's its typical color. But as it starts to accumulate more salt, it turns red and eventually falls off. And later in the summer, it'll produce tiny little flowers coming in three. It's uh, wind pollinated. Um, it spreads by a creeping rootstock. It's a fascinating little gem we got here. Let's check out more. Well, you don't want to just go and start picking every little stem you find. You want to spread your harvest out. This sea bean is best between, I would say, May and July. You want to go for the lighter colored stems here. And don't go all the way to the base. But when you, when you pinch it off, snap it gently at a joint so these new joints can grow right out. You want to avoid picking this later in the season when it turns red. There's a silica thread, it turns really woody down the stem. So, like I said before, spread out your picking between plants. And also, you really want to avoid walking through these fragile mats. These stems really break off easily and you don't want to disturb this very precious little habitat. Salicornia virginica has a very unique history. In pre-industrial times, it was known as glasswort, and it was exported all over Europe. It was gathered in huge heaps, dried and burned. This sodium-rich ash was used as, mixed with 
or fused with um, sand, it was used to create a rough glass. All right, one more cool fact about Salicornia. I just can't get enough. Salicornia is the most promising plant for seawater agriculture. There's currently farm prototypes in Saudi Arabia. The seeds from Salicornia are extremely high in oil, 30%. This oil can be used for biodiesel and it avoids the subject of food versus fuel because Salicornia is growing in salt water where no other food crop can be grown. So knowing that Salicornia forms extensive colonies, you may be thinking that it should be thriving right now and that it doesn't really have anything threatening it. But it survives in estuaries. In Bellingham, we have seven pocket estuaries currently and all of them are in major downtown areas. There's railroads pocketing them in. As you can see, their environment is not safe. As you can see, these estuaries are endangered from human encroachment and development. These estuaries provide key and critical habitat for salmon, eelgrass, waterfowl like our native blue heron which has a nest right up in these dug firs up here. It is up to us, Wild Food Clan, to advocate and practice harvesting sustainably and educating our community and our friends and our family about these key species and the critical, fragile environments that they exist in. Thanks.